you strong. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, boys, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, the actually occurred in 2021, are now behind us. Unfortunately, like all good things, they must come to an end. And Australia put on an absolutely scintillating performance against the world in, in the COVID pandemic. And today's podcast, I think, should take the opportunity to recap some of our great moments of this past Olympiad. But firstly, welcome back to the podcast, boys. It's a pleasure. To have you both on. Hey, thanks, Robin. Yeah, good, good intro there. Very good. Very uh, succinctly summarised. How bloody good were these Olympics? Australia just up and about, getting it done. Titmus in the pool. McKeon, McEwen. Bloody, it was all happening. The Boomers. Jess Fox. That's up. Hit oh, a bowl. Sean's, Sean's up and about. Shawnee boy. Oh boy. Where, 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 where's he been hiding this? Where has he been hiding this? He's just oh, had to mate. build up to this uh, episode of the podcast. But, yeah, w- like you said, boys, what, what an Olympics. It's going to be a fair fair come down after, after what a beautiful two weeks it's been. I, I'm so happy that it's only three years away for Paris because it's been fantastic viewing and so many great medalists and looking forward to more medals come Paris. Absolutely. What, what I'm sort of thinking at the moment, though, I think Sean's, a bit like the old grey flash Chautauqua, starting his run a bit late and then flying home. So I haven't seen this amount of enthusiasm from, from him before. Oh, mate. Well, you know, the, the green and gold energy, the patriotism is just uh, flowing through the veins at the moment. So it's going to be going to be sad in a way that the, um, the Olympics have come to an end. But mm. we do have the Paralympics coming up as well. So it should be some yes, absolutely. Aussie medals in contention there. So get behind them. And um, yeah, as you said, Damo, getting, looking forward to Paris in three years. It's a pretty. It's a bit of a historic day because I think that's the first time Sean's even men- mentioned the word patriot or patriotism since Tom Brady left. So it's a it's a massive day here at Triax already. So on that note, I reckon let's recap some of the glory days of the Tokyo Olympics. Now, first off, we've got our top ten moments. Now, there's been a lot of conjecture and a bit of in in house fighting here as to the order of this top ten. So a few of us are a bit disgruntled as to what the order is, but we made a compromise. So We'll outline from 10 to 1 and we'll go from there. So who wants to kick us off? All right. So before we get into the top 10 moments, um, we just wanted to mention a few of our honourable mentions who did just missed out on the top 10. If we included them, this podcast probably would have gone for three hours. So we've had to cut them from the list, but we did want to make sure that we mentioned them. So starting from the top, Shawnee, far away, who just missed out on our top 10? Yeah, I reckon the Matildas, they're pretty stiff to miss out, so they won't be uh, they won't feature in the top ten. They put in a very gallant effort to get through to the bronze medal game. I'm unfortunately going down to USA, who are a pretty tough team. And the Oli Roos as well. I reckon they were they were very good. So both uh, soccer teams, the Oli Roos knocking off Argentina in the group stage, which was a, a big scalp. But yeah, that was probably the highlight for them. Absolutely. And then I reckon early on in the athletics meet was Pat Tiernan, the men's 10K, the Australian 10K runner, and literally gave his heart and soul to the race and, and had to basically collapse about 150, 200 from home and, and picked himself off and, and finished in still a blistering time. So that was uh, definitely a moment that is worth celebrating and remembering as well. Yeah, and then we had uh, Harry Gass, who was our first boxing medalist since uh, 1988 uh, Seoul Olympics. So... Great performance from him and only very young and definitely will be back in Paris from all, all accounts. So hopefully he can go one or two better and get, get the gold. Absolutely. Showed a lot of heart and determination, the young fella. So good on him. I reckon as well, stiff to, stiff to miss the top 10 were our women's beach volleyballers. So was it Clancy and Atasho mm-hmm. Del Sola? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Maria Faye, Atasho Del Sola. Yeah, they... Um, Knocked off the the Canadians who were ranked number one, and then the Latvians in the in the semi, and unfortunately went down the gold medal game. But Silva is nothing to sneeze at at all at the Olympics. So well done to them. Just a shout out to our linguistic specialist there, Rob, who uh, has got the pronunciation down pat there on the beach volleyballers. <laughs> Absolutely, watch enough of the games, mate. Don't worry about that. And of course, we've got the hundred meter sprinter, 
The Matt Shervington 2.0, I think, was what we dubbed him or has been dubbed, and that was Roland Browning. Won a pretty slick heat knocking off Johan Blake. So, couldn't unfortunately, couldn't make it in the final, but still a pretty good performance considering I don't think we've made it to that level since Shervo in 2000. Paris will be one He'll be one to watch, I reckon. Yeah, hopefully he's still working on that mullet come Paris. There'll be some real lushness about that. Uh, and then our, our final honourable mention was Melissa Wu, who a stalwart of the Olympic Games, been to multiple games now, and finally um, won herself an individual medal. So well done to her, but just didn't quite make the top 10 for us. Absolutely. So obviously, obviously they're all outstanding candidates and we just couldn't quite fit them in, but now it's going to get a bit exciting. So we'll go 10 to 1 here and I'll lead us off, as I usually do. The eight-time Olympian, Andrew Hoy, is our 10th moment in the countdown. He was exemplary again, winning a silver and bronze on the same night. So I think that's outstanding from a 60-something-year-old bloke who still has future Olympics in mind. So an outstanding horseman and an outstanding representation of Australian equestrian. Yeah, on, on numbers alone, I think he makes a list just for oldest athlete, two medals, just hard to yeah. go past, isn't it? Absolutely. All right, so number nine on the list is Nicola McDermott, who we did actually give a shout-out to in our introduction to the Olympics as a potential medalist, and she she came through. She broke the Australian record leading into the game, so got over the two-metre mark and then made the, the final of the women's high jump and – Broke her own record again, the 202, and just missed out on, on gold. She ended up with a silver medal in, in the high jump final. So really great effort from her. Great enthusiasm as well. Rob was actually clapping himself in like Nicola before the start of the podcast here. So, yeah, great to see. And obviously she's young. It's her first Olympic Games, so there's plenty of potential moving forward to Paris for, for Nicola as well. Yeah, that last attempt she had on the, was it 204? Mate, that was yep. so... So so yes. close. I don't know. I still still don't know how she quite knocked the knocked the bar off there. But yeah, stiff to not have not have cleared that one. But silver, very very good effort. Number eight on the list. There was a bit of a social media fanfare for this man. Everyone putting their was it putting their bowls out for Peter Bowl. Oh, in the eight hundred <laughs> meters. So he stormed. I didn't his, see that. Didn't you? Uh, no. Yeah. Was it put your spag bowl out for... Yeah, spag bowls. Oh, right. People with their <laughs> spag bowl. <laughs> yeah. yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so he, he stormed home um, in the 800-metre semi. He won... Was it the semi? Yeah, he did. He yeah, won he won semi, that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yep. Won the semi. And then in the final, he, he was almost the pace setter, wasn't he? And then... Yep, sure was. He just couldn't quite hold on in that sort of last... 200 metres or so, and he got overtaken. Uh, finished fourth, though, which is a very, very good effort. And, again, another one to look look for in uh, Paris. Absolutely. And just I think the, uh, the nation just warmed to him, which was outstanding, and just loved his attitude and, and the way he sort of took it to him in that final as well because he knew that they were just going to be jogging and so it would be a sprint at the end. So well done to what well on to Peter. Uh, number seven we have. This one I think was my personal favourite race in the swimming pool, and that was... The women's four by one medley relay. So Australia had a pretty strong contingent in Kaylee Mc, Kaylee McEwen, Emma McKeon, Kate Campbell, and Chelsea Hodges. They managed to get the job done and came over the top of the Americans too. And I think the Americans were pretty filthy about how quick Australia's changeovers were. So came from the clouds, anchored by Kate Campbell, which was a good way to sort of end that swimming meet to win a gold. So anytime you win a gold medal against the Yanks. We upgraded to platinum, so there you, go. you can't beat that. Yep, you did. You did love that one, Rob. That was probably, as you, as you said, your favourite, and you you couldn't stop talking about it in the group chat. So, luckily for you, it did make the top ten. I think that's because you wrote this list without any consultation. But we won't talk about that one. Um, anyway, mo- moving on to to number six. So number six is a, a duo. They didn't actually compete together to win a medal together. But Cedric Jubler and Ash Maloney in the decathlon, we did chat about this one in one of our earlier podcasts. But in heading into the last event of the decathlon, Ash Maloney was in position to win a medal. He just had to finish his 1,500-metre run within 10 or 15 seconds of his nearest competitors. Uh, he was struggling a little bit. And his countryman, Cedric Jubler, who was just running for the sake of running, essentially wasn't going to win a medal, 
set the pace for him in the 1500 and then heading into the end of the last lap gave him one of the all time favorite rev ups that Ted Witten would be proud of and absolutely pushed, pushed his mate over the line and he got in within the time that he needed to and ended up winning the bronze medal. So fantastic stuff from both Cedric and Ash. Number five on the list, the men's and women's fours in the rowing, both, both securing gold, which is a very good effort. I think Australia is probably usually pretty good. You could probably pencil them in for a few rowing medals, but the women's, they very tight with the, the Dutch, I think it was. Half a second, I think it was, between, between them for, for gold and silver. And so very, very close there. And then the men's fours as well got over the line in the gold, which was very good. And then the golden girl of Australia's Olympics and probably our most successful, one of our most successful athletes ever and has tied four people with the most amount of golds is Emma McKeon. So she basically won everything there was, relays, freestyles, everything. She was absolutely scintillating across the swimming program and hopefully will get remembered in generations to come for that performance because it was absolutely unbelievable. To I think she won the, she win the 50 or the 100 and then went 15 minutes later, had the medley relay. So, And then I think she swam that leg as the butterfly leg. So she it's did. unbelievable. Yeah. Versatility and world, a world dominator. So you, you can't, go, can't go further past it, I don't think. No, I, was, I was actually <laughs> watching the Channel 7 recap that they had on last night of the Olympic Games. And I think Grant Hackett's actually been listening to our podcast because he dropped the same oh. joke about the uh, Qantas oversized baggage claim for old Emma. Oh, uh, so I think old, old oh. Grant's definitely been tuning in. That's unbelievable. That's, uh, well, that's good. I think there's, there's been a few instances like that, Damo, where we've seen people sort of jump on. I did see a couple of Jane Savile memes getting around Twitter as well, which we've pushed. So, mate, I think we're starting to sort of inflict upon the, the commentary around the sporting events worldwide. Well, Net, Netball's going to be in at Brisbane as well because yes. Shawnee made that call through to the IOC. So, yes. look, we've got a lot of pushing power here at Triax. We, we speak and, and everyone else listens. What, what, what can we say? <laughs> well, usually it's me and Damo speaking. You listen, Sean. So it's a, it's a bit of a role reversal, which is good. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Rob. Yeah, it's good, mate. Well done. All right, so now we're into the top three, the podium position. So our bronze medal, who's probably pretty stiff not to be a little bit higher up on Very the podium stiff. Here, but probably other than Emma McKeon, is probably the golden girl of the Australian Olympics. Everyone fell in love with this athlete. So Jess Fox, she had the heartbreak of the bronze medal in, in the, the kayak, the K1, and then had the opportunity to win gold again. So it's the first time that the canoe has been brought into the Olympics uh, for the women and she got gold there. So she doubled up, she got bronze and gold and it was finally for her completed the set. So she's now got gold, silver and bronze and um, what a fantastic moment. And just, Mm. I think everyone just loved watching it. It was so much emotion behind and everyone from Australia was behind her, but um, just the ultimate professional as well. Yeah, having her old Absolutely. man on the on the commentary team was was a very interesting dynamic as well, and he kept his composure uh, very well in that gold medal game, uh, gold medal race. Sorry, and I think that the Jess Fox winning winning the gold, big big weight taken off my shoulders personally because Jess Fox was one of my oh. gold medal locks, and up until that point, I was the only one who hadn't come through, and she'd won the bronze previously, so there was a little bit of pressure on me, and thankfully, Jess came through. So. <laughs> have a listen it's all about sean clearly sean's turned a jess fox gold medal moment into something about himself that's outstanding <laughs> I, I will protest i wanted jess fox as number one on the on this list and i was relegated through unforeseen circumstances so to me that was probably my second favorite moment of the olympics anyway but Given her personality and who she was, I think that she was probably my standout individual athlete anyway, for for whatever that's worth. So number two, the silver medal position, which also doesn't really sit well with me, but I'll go with it. And that is the Boomers winning that elusive medal in international competition and, and did so in the end in pretty emphatic style against Slovenia. Sort of in the last few minutes, that fourth quarter pulled away, which was which was outstanding. And it was just so good to see Australia have some success after finishing fourth so many times at the Olympics and world champs. So it was unbelievable. I think my favourite moment that was probably seeing Andrew Gaze after the game tear up and, and express what it meant to him and, and the former boomers and, 
and basically all the work that had been done up until that point to get Australian basketball on the international map. So that was a, a touching moment and I did shed a tear or two. I'm happy to admit that. So it was a, a great day, a great, a great night for Australian basketball. Yeah, I think Gaze's reaction and I think Paddy Mills touched on it um, post-game, acknowledging all those that had played played for the Boomers and hadn't quite got the success that they did and acknowledging them and even the future teams to come. I think it's probably the real, a real, it's going to be looking back in say 20, 30 years. I think a lot of people are going to look back to this moment, but they did win bronze as sort of the turning point, um, hopefully for Australian basketball um, on the international stage. Yeah, I think Rob and I touched on it in our little episode talking about the game, just about how how similar to sort of the the Socceroos qualifying for the World Cup in 2006, uh, that being a turning point for for soccer in Australia. And I, I think this will have similar repercussions for basketball in Australia. And we'll put a link up to that video as well that's currently going viral on YouTube. So you can have a look at that. Some good content from me and Damo there as well. So make sure to check that one out. But number one, Sean, I think this is an obvious one. I think if you asked the Australian public what was the most iconic moment of these Tokyo 2020 games, I think at least 75% of people would say Ariane Titmus sticking it to Ledecky in the 400 metres and her coach going absolutely gangbusters on the sidelines and all the Japanese officials going, what's going on with this bloke? And he just didn't care and went off his nut and it was outstanding to watch. It was like Godzilla ripping down Tokyo City, wasn't it? <laughs> Being boxy, he's just going bananas up there. <laughs> oh, iconic though. And how quickly did that turn into a meme? You know what I liked most about it was all the Americans cutting up rough. Think, yes, like yeah. about, about his reaction and about Ledecky and just cracking the wobblies and toys thrown out of the cot. And I think so. Yeah, that was that was probably the seeing seeing the reaction of the American public, particularly because they we spoke about this. I don't know if we spoke about this in the first Olympic preview, but how the times that the swimming finals are put on is so it's prime time in America, yes. which is about middle yep. of the day middle of the day for us and in Japan. So they have that that, that pull to sort of get what they want, and then they go and lose. So. They can get stuffed. Oh, I mean, it, it was like that for a lot of the events. Though, like the Americans just have so much pulling power with the broadcast rights that you know, um, it was great when the U.S. women's soccer team didn't make the final because yeah. then their game for bronze medal was on at four a.m. American time <laughs> rather than prime time. So it definitely does come back to bite you on the ass a little bit when you preempt that you're going to win particular medals. But I would say as well, like you said, they're blowing up about it, the Americans, but. You see some of the carry on from the Americans when they won a medal in the pool, but oh, yeah, splashing yeah. and jumping about in the water. And then when we won a medal and Ariane Titmus, to her credit, didn't react poorly at all. She just took it all in. It was her coach going bananas, but you know, he's allowed to do whatever he wants. Like that's got no impact on what the athletes have done. hundred percent. Could not agree more with that. And, and again, that's part of the reason why that we labeled it a platinum medal. It's because of how sweet it is to stick it up. Some of those people. So you know, that, that's outstanding. We should have done a platinum medal tally. Damn, we've got to do that. But, boys, I reckon it's a pretty solid top 10. I don't think there's too many complaints with that. I personally would have seen Jess Fox a little bit higher. But apart from that, not too bad, I don't think. All right, boys. Now, we had three very famous and prestigious uh, awards that we were handing out uh, as part of these Olympic Games. We had the Ted Witten Award, the Farlap Award, and the Jane Savile Award. And it is time to announce our three medalists for each of these awards. So I'll, ki- I'll kick off the proceedings with the, the Ted Witten Award. Now, the, the Ted Witten Award. You're going to do the voice. Hey, the, yeah, the, t- you, the you, Ted Witten Award is all about sticking it right up. Him. You stuck it right up. Him. That's what you did. All right. So <laughs> yes, yeah, very good. Very good. Basically, I reckon for the most part, you're a prime candidate for this award if – you knock off either an American or the, the Brits, the Poms. So the bronze medalist of the Ted Witten Award was the Boomers in the basketball. Now, they didn't specifically knock off the, the Americans or the Poms, but they pretty much stuck it up to the entire world and came in bronze, showed that Australian basketball is on the map 
from from now on. So uh, in silver, Ariane Titmus, hard to go past her. Stuck it stuck it right up to Ledecky in the Yanks. Uh, also in the in the field of relays, did very good there. And number one, Emma McKeon. Uh, she as well knocked off a few few Yanks in the pool who try to walk around like they they own the joint. The Americans in the pool try to. Uh, make play by their rules and their broadcasting rules. So uh, well done to Emma. She's the, the gold medalist of the inaugural Ted Whitten Award. Some might even say a platinum medalist there, Shawnee. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes, Damo, very good. <laughs> All right. So moving on to our second category, so the Farlap Award. So uh, for those that don't know, Farlap had a huge heart, bigger than most. Um, so this award goes out to our athletes that, showed a lot of heart or a lot of uh, patriotism for, for Australia throughout the, the Olympic Games. So very much like the men's high jump final, we've got a tie here for... for oh, what? Um, so we're going to split that medal down down the gut. So we've got Cedric Jubler for showing the heart to put his own event and position aside and help out his teammate Ash Maloney to, to get up, up on the podium. Um, fantastic effort. And there was a little bit of Ted Whitten in that um, from Cedric. He yeah, did it was. get up Ash a little bit just to get him get him moving over the line. And, and he's tied with Owen Wright, um, who got a bronze in the, the surfing. Um, great effort from Owen. He had a brain injury five years ago and couldn't even walk. So to get to an Olympic Games and get on the podium um, is a fantastic effort and shows an incredible amount of heart. So well done to him on making the podium. In the silver position, we've got Paddy Tiernan, who we discussed earlier. So 10K runner hit the wall on his last lap, got knocked down, but he got back up again a couple of times and managed to get himself over the line. And just a great effort and just showed that determination and that Aussie spirit to keep going. There was nothing left for him to really prove at that point. He wasn't going to win. It was a great effort from Paddy there. Um, and our gold medalist, again, old spag bowl, Peter Bowl has hit the podium here. A lot of heart, not just heart out on the event, but getting into the hearts of Australians back at home with his performance and his great speech. Great effort to improve on his Rio performance where we probably didn't even know that he was actually there, but he did compete at the Rio Games and then he he really turned it on in that semi here in the 800. As you said, was the pace setter in, in the 800 final and left it all out there on the track and unfortunately just didn't have enough left in the tank, but really inspired Aussies back at home. So well done to Peter on the gold medal. Hopefully you can make it a real gold medal um, in Paris. Very good, Darren. That's a very good summary there, mate. Outstanding. Now to culminate the Olympic series and, and the Olympic awards, we're finishing off with Jane Saville. Obviously my personal heartbreak from any Olympic memories, watching her get disqualified in Sydney Olympics. We all know about that. So this award is for those that had heartbreaking defeats or disappointments or, you know, so close to getting a medal or whatever it might have been. So there's a few unlucky candidates that missed out, but we've narrowed it down to a, a select group and, and the bronze medal on, on the dais is uh, Matt Denny, the, the Ute Muster, was missed, Mr. Bronze by about five centimetres, I reckon, unfortunately. And his TikTok performances after then would suggest that it's, it's, it's affected him a lot. And, and But we love the content from, from the Ute Master as well. He's got a bit of personality, so keep that up. Very good. There is a, a, a bit of a mention there for Kelsey Lee Barber, who was five centimetres away from silver as well in the Jav. Was the Jav or Discus? Jav. Javelin. Jav, yeah. Who was five centimetres away from silver in the Javelin as well. So pretty good performances there from the two athletics field events. And then the silver medal for the Jane Savile Award goes to the Kookaburras. Unfortunately, this silver matches their silver that they won in the gold medal match, which was unfortunate. They lost in a playoff. It was very hard to watch. And it was pretty, yeah, it's, it's pretty brutal way to lose a gold medal game. As soon as the, uh, as soon as the, they're tired after full time, they go to, in the, into a playoff, into a penalty shootout. And unfortunately, they weren't on the right end of that. So that was pretty heartbreaking to watch. And then the, the goal for this goes to Nicola McDermott. So she still won a silver, but what I reckon was most heartbreaking was that final jump. She literally just nudged that bar on the way down and it got knocked off. Had she not done that, they still could have been jumping for we know now. So 
I think that she was pretty close. I think she was closer to a gold medal than what she's probably given credit for. And it, had she cleared that jump, then I think that there would have been an enormous amount of pressure on the other competitor as well. So I think that she was very stiff, but again, a good platform going into uh, Paris. Bienvenue. Oui, oui. That means welcome, I think, in French. So yeah, uh, but that, that's that's pretty good. So that's a bit of a culmination there. And there's obviously a few people who missed out as well. If there, and you think, and if you think that there's a massive oversight or we're completely off our heads, then first of all, contact Sean, and then second of all, comment, you know, like, subscribe, give us, you know, get in touch with us, and tell us exactly what, what we got wrong. And we're open to a bit of a debate as well. But uh, boys, uh, it's sad to say that I think that's the end of our Olympic series, which is a bit of a disappointment considering how good the Olympics were for our situation in particular and, and being in lockdown and watching on the TV. I think it gave a lot of hope and inspiration to people, particularly you know, watching some of these athletes succeed. So I think it was a bit of a blessing in disguise the Tokyo Olympics coming around when it did. Yeah, absolutely. I think it not only did it, occupy some time so we weren't sitting around twiddling our thumbs but as you mentioned Rob Australia putting in a really really good performance there I think it's their best performance ever in terms of yes yep uh, gold equal medals. best yeah equal best so yeah you saw the whole the whole country well half half the country is locked down at the moment so I think you saw that everyone was sort of getting around the Olympics and really engaging with it strongly and hopefully going forward the, the performance continue continue to improve I think I think the time zone and and the state of the country at the moment it was um it was very fitting that it was on and um as we said like it was great that probably more people probably tuned in than normal for these olympics because it just happened that by chance a lot of people were working from home or at home um, with a bit of spare time so it's been a fantastic olympics and hopefully what they've done and built up to here at tokyo can run on into paris with that quick turnaround and hopefully we're talking about the most medals ever in terms of gold at the next olympics so Absolutely. And it's a good segue, boys, as well. We will have a, uh, a bit of a, a video later on in the week talking about why we think Australia was so successful in these Olympics and maybe some of the, the reasons behind that as well. So that'll be a nice, in-depth, more of a serious performance side of discussion. So tune in, for the, tune in to that when it comes up. Like, subscribe, do all the things you can if you get any value out of the content. And Thanks for tuning in and we'll see, we'll see you soon. We'll wave... Goodbye to Tokyo and hello to Paris. Arigato, Rob. (laughs) 